Chapter 38, The Reproductive System. The female reproductive system depends on hormones produced by the endocrine system for correct development and reproductive function. Puberty and sexual maturation are also dependent on accurate release of hormones at the appropriate time in the menstrual or female cycle. The reproductive organs represent the biological aspect of sexual identity, and women may feel that their personal identity is comprised by disorders of this system. At birth, the ovaries contain all the eggs, or oocytes, primary ova, or eggs, that the woman will ever produce, which is approximately 2 million per ovary. The ovarian cycle has two phases. The follicular phase is the 14 days of the 28-day cycle. The estrogen peaks when the ovum is released, known as ovulation, about 14 days before the next menstrual cycle. The ovum lives up to 24 hours after fertilization. The luteal phase, this phase is day 15 to 28 of the 28 day cycle. There are specific stages of the menstrual cycle. Stage one is the menstrual stage for day, and it's days one to five. The endometrium sloughs away as menstrual flow begins. Progesterone and estrogen are no longer being secreted. New follicle starts to mature. Stage two is the growth and repair days six through 14. The follicle grows and the egg matures. The endometrium retor returns to a normal state and then begins to thicken in response to estrogen. Stage three is the ovulation. The ovulation occurs 14 days before menses, regardless of the length of the menstrual cycle. It takes place while the follicle ruptures and releases the egg. If the pregnancy does not occur, the corpus luteum deteriorates, estrogen and progesterone will decline, and the thickened tissue on the endometrium of the uterus is sloughed off and is discharged via the vagina as the menstrual period. Days 15 to 28, which is stage four, the secretory stage. The corpus luteum secretes progesterone. The endometrium continues to thicken in response to estrogen and progesterone. The uterus prepares to receive the fertilized ovum. Puberty is a period of accelerated growth. The hips begin to widen, breasts begin to develop, the axillary and the pubic hair appears. Symptoms decrease as the woman's body adjusts to lower level of estrogen. Changes in menstrual flow and menstrual irregularity require the woman to always be prepared for an unexpected menstrual period. One's attitudes and ideas regarding menstruation are formed early in life. These attitudes and ideas are based on the thoughts and the beliefs expressed by other women and on personal experience. Incorrect perception about this normal process may increase physical discomfort or cause a young woman unnecessary embarrassment or fear. During the first year after menarche, menstrual cycle may be irregular, but by the second year, a regular cycle will begin. The nurse taken the gynecologic history of a postmenopausal Mexican-American patient can help develop rapport by establishing eye contact, involving family members, touching the patient, using a polite tone of voice, respecting her privacy. The correct answers for developing rapport are two, four, and five. Once a menstrual pattern is established, a change from this pattern is a reason to consult a healthcare provider. 
Mild cramping may occur and some mood swings may be associated with the hormonal changes. A sharp pain in the lower right or lower left quadrant, sometimes felt at mid-cycle around the time of ovulation and lasting a few hours, is known as middle smirts. The vagina is a warm, moist, dark vault in which microorganisms may flourish. If the vaginal discharge develops an odor, changes in color or consistency, or causes irritation or burning of vaginal mucosa, healthcare providers should be consulted. Normal vaginal discharge has an off-white color and is odorless. The main line of defense against infection is lactic acid, which causes an acidic pH. Any change or disruption in this pH can result in an infection. Age, pregnancy, medication, and diet can affect the way the breasts feel. As women age, the denseness and adipose tissue content decreases. Birth control pills, hormone replacement therapy, and pregnancy may cause the breasts to increase in size. Information concerning techniques of contraception is essential to provide to the, in, to the patient to prevent unwanted and unintended pregnancies. The most effective contraceptive methods for adolescents and young adults include abstinence, the use of planned con contraception, the correct use of condoms to prevent sexually transmitted infections, and lifestyle counseling. Natural family planning. The ovum is viable up to 24 hours after ovulation, and the sperm are viable up to 72 hours in the fallopian tube. For basal body temperature, monitoring the temperature each morning and noting a rise that occurs at ovulation. The calendar or rhythm method. This is based on knowledge that ovulation occurs 14 days before menstruation. Keeping track of the menstrual cycle may help predict time of ovulation. The Marquette model of fam natural family planning. This is the use of an electronic hormonal infertility monitor that tracks the levels of urinary metabolites of estrogen and luteinizing hormones. Natural family planning requires commitment and accurate monitoring during the menstrual cycle. For oral contraceptives, the most popular method of reversal hormonal contraception it is effective if they are used properly and offer some benefits, such as relief of breast tenderness, bloating, symptoms of premenstrual syndrome. However, smoking will increase the risk of complications, especially women older than 35 years. Primary prevention is designed to decrease the probability of becoming ill, like maintaining a health or nutrition history and providing immunizations. Secondary prevention involves screening for detection of specific diseases a patient is at risk for so that early treatment may be provided. Tertiary prevent prevention minimizes the impact of an already diagnosed condition. Preparing a woman for a pelvic exam is vital and important. You need to provide privacy and good lighting, assemble the supplies necessary and clean gloves, orient the patient to the equipment and the purpose of the examination. Encourage micturation because a full bladder will make the examination more uncomfortable. The patient should be draped and positioned appropriately depending on what the doctor has required and you should stay with the woman and encourage her with information to promote her comfort level 
For the male system, the scrotum is covered with wrinkled skin and very sensitive to temperature, pressure, touch, and pain. The penis is covered with skin and includes foreskin unless the gentleman has been circumcised. The prostate gland is shaped like a walnut. It encircles the urethra and is located below and to the rear of the bladder. The, the penis is flaccid until sexual arousal will cause the arterioles to the, rect to the erectile tissue to dilate and the veins to constrict. This engorges the penis with blood until it is enlarged and rigid. This is known as an erection. Erections may be stimulated by anticipation, memory, visual sensations, or touch on the gland's penis and skin of the genital area. Thoughts, emotions, some medications, or medical disorders may sometimes inhibit an erection. If stimulation occurs and continues, the ejaculation will occur. This is the forceful expulsion of semen from the urethra. The penis will transfer the semen to the vagina. It also carries urine through the urethra to be excreted. The male sex hormones are called androgens. At puberty, testosterone levels rise and cause maturation of the male reproductive organs. Sperm takes 70 days to mature and are constantly being produced once puberty has occurred. The normal sperm count is greater than 20 million per milliliter. Some medical disorders or use of some medications may have side effects that affect sexual functioning. Testosterone, muscle strength, bone mass, libido, erectile function all decrease with age. This can affect the psychological sense of well-being for the man. Testosterone replacement therapy is thought to decrease visceral fat and improve bone density, muscle strength, libido, and energy, but this may not improve erectile function. In men who have, had no, who have not had cancer, testosterone therapy has been used to improve sexual function. However, there is yet to be sufficient data. Both the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems influence the normal sexual response cycle. As the man ages, there is no abrupt cessation of gonadal hormone activity like there is in a woman. There is a gradual decrease in testosterone and anabolic hormones. Reversible contraception for the man involves the use of spermicidal creams, gels, or foams applied before intercourse to kill sperm in the vagina. These are more effective if used in conjunction with a condom. May male sterilization by vasectomy is a popular method of permanent contraception. Post vasectomy instructions to use ice applications and acetaminophen or ibuprofen for scrotal pain and swelling for the first 12 to 24 hours are given postoperatively. The patient should wear jockey shorts or a scrotal support for comfort. Sexual intercourse may be resumed in one week based on the provider's recommendations. The nurse should emphasize to the patient that two negative sperm counts are necessary after a vasectomy before the patient can be considered infertile and some form of contraception should be used until two negative sperm counts have been obtained. Test for general state of health, which would be a CBC, urinalysis, chemistry profile, and thyroid tests are often done initially when the patient has a problem concerning the reproductive tract. Serum acid phosphatase is usually elevated in patients with prostate cancer. Serum alkaline phosphatase is elevated if malignancy of the prostate has metastasized to the bone.